All right, hey everybody, so we're back, and I'm finally back from vacation. This is gonna be the new Johnny's Weekends trailer, basically, so I'll give you guys a little run around this thing if you guys wanna check it out, it's pretty cool. This is a Grand Designs uh, Momentum G-Class, and basically what this means is that this one actually has a garage that's built into it, which is pretty cool. So this is a 29G model. They make several different other ones. There's another one called a 28, they have a 29, a 30, and even a 31 that are all bumper pulls, too. So uh, instead of having a fifth wheel, that happens to have a garage this one has its own designated garage in it and i'll kind of run you through a couple things real quick um some of the modifications i kind of plan on doing we'll run through that and just kind of a quick walk around tour so we'll go ahead and get started now up on the front of this this actually did come from the previous customers because this uh trailer is not brand brand new this is a 2020 model um, that i happened to pick up from a customer they used it one time because of the pandemic and uh, being that this is also a pre-pandemic trailer um supposedly after talking to a couple grand design mechanics they also felt that this unit was also built a little bit better because during the pandemic as you guys probably know we had a lot of people who were laid off we had people who quit their jobs and and other people who just kind of left and went to go live life and kind of never came back so um anyway that was kind of one of the reasons i bought this and a couple others which i'll show you some things that i thought were pretty permanent as to why i made the decision that i did as when i bought this trailer so one thing it did come with is the equalizer hitch and to be honest i'm not really a fan i don't like the bar system too much after having an anderson with the chains uh it's just they're loud i don't like the bars they're it's kind of bulky and the whole system is heavy so plus this one actually for this particular trailer is a little bit light this one here is a uh, 14,000 pounds rated and the tongue weight actually for this kind of a trailer after loading it up with uh, fresh water gear your toys it'll actually be a little bit underrated so i'll be switching this out looking for another one the way safe is very popular so we'll kind of go over that maybe later in a different video but we'll move on from there so basically you have your smaller set of propane tanks here. They don't kind of give you the larger ones like they do on some setups, which is fine. Um, I may switch those out later. As far as the batteries go, um, these batteries are a little bit older and I am going to be switching these out. If you kind of take a look, these are just basically RV Marine deep cycle batteries. There's nothing special. I'm going to be switching these out actually to SOK lithium batteries as part of the modifications and some of the things I'm going to do. If you don't know anything about the SOK batteries, you should really take a look at these as they're fully, you know, marine batteries. You can put them in a boat, RVs. They're able to be outside in the weather if need be. And not to mention they're fully rebuildable and serviceable, which is why the SOK battery line is such a great lithium battery. You should look them up, read about them. I have links in the description if you guys want best pricing. They're just a good battery that you guys really should take a look into. I was looking at the Battleborn line, but these are far superior, not to mention for the price and everything. It's just, it's just a better way to go. Now this trailer does actually come with solar already built on it and it does have an inverter on it. I'll show you here inside the storage compartment. Now this storage compartment is probably their biggest storage compartment. If you take a look in here, this is pretty decent size as it actually goes all the way up here. But with toy haulers, you actually don't get a lot of storage. That's one of the things that you kind of miss out on with storage when you uh, go from a travel trailer to a toy hauler is, is sometimes you lose a decent amount at that. But this one does have the Jaboni MPPT controller, which I will be changing this out because that one doesn't hold enough wattage. I think it's only rated for, I'll have to look again, but maybe five watts max so i'm going to be doing a little bit more than that so we'll be switching that out um the inverter kind of lays down and beside that compartment but this whole area is going to change soon and anyway but we'll move on now one thing that you will notice on these toy hauler kind of models is that they don't really come with auto level nor do they come with electric jack so much just due to the fact that they are so heavy and so you kind of go with weight savings by not having those items which these are real simple but they're not meant for leveling they're just meant for stabilizing so it's possible i may even be switching this out because i do want something that i can you know do auto level with or at least you know do some leveling with something a little bit more heavy duty and this particular model happens to have a slide on each side. So you get the slide, which this has a couch on it here. And on the other side, it has a bedroom that pops out, but we'll go over that in just a minute. And this particular model comes with the E-rated tires that are from Westlake. Now, one thing about these tires is that, you know, they're a decent popular brand 
and they're actually rated really well. They actually have a, a good history rating and their numbers look really good. So it's very possible I might just run these Westlakes for a while before I maybe switch out to maybe like a Goodyear Endurance, say Loons or whatever it is I might go with later. But um, the Westlakes are actually not a bad tire at all. So I may run them for a little while. They're still pretty new. Now one thing with the Grand Design is that they didn't go with any suspension upgrades or anything. But if you look at the amount of rust down here, there's <laughs> basically none, which is one of the reasons I bought the trailer. The frame is in excellent shape. No matter where you look on this trailer, it's just basically rust free, which was a real big thing for me. So, and I may actually, you know, be upgrading the suspension soon because I, I'm probably going to go with either Cree or one of the other models, at least get the web bolts as well, which makes servicing a little bit easier. So we'll probably switch that at some point down the road. Now, being that this is a 2020 model, it's actually a little bit different. As soon as you get to 2021, I believe, what happens is that they change the awning actually from, you know, being this 18 foot to, a, I think it's a 22 foot, and it actually covers the other door. So that is one thing I was actually wanting to happen, but I thought this trailer was actually a better buy, so which is why I got it. Another thing on this line with the Momentum G Class is that they actually provide as an option is a rear awning. Now, they're cool, but they do have a lot of problems. So for the most part, this one actually doesn't work. It was the only thing on this trailer that didn't work. They had somebody fix it. It worked for a little bit and then it got jammed again and they decided, you know, that was it because it's just so fragile. And like with most toy haulers, this one does come with a fuel station that's underneath. It's a 30 gallon, which everything is included there. Your nozzle, your switch for basically your fuel levels are there. Also your on off switch. They do give you storage for your sewer lines and everything. Uh, basically your, your uh, you know, sewer hose. And I do have a couple modifications I'm doing on that, which I can show you guys later if you want to stick around. And if we just kind of look over here, this is where our 30 amp service is. And basically this trailer has two AC units on it. And because of the um, energy management system, it actually allows you to run two AC units on 30 amps because it'll shed power while the other one's trying to fire up. And basically I believe both of the AC units on here also have soft starts built in. So you can actually run both of your AC units on a 30 amp service and even on the generator that is on board here, which I'll show you that here in a second. And so right here, this is where you'll have all of your hookups for basically your fresh water, doing your sanitizing, also black tank flush and everything else. And this one actually has a small storage compartment on the side so you can put, you know, your water lines and hoses and you can run everything through the port. That way all your lines stay real clean underneath. Uh, one thing with this one is that it's actually a little bit different from the 21 and 22 models. This whole bay is actually enclosed and it's a full wet bay. That way, if anything gets wet, you're not gonna damage it versus if this area does get wet over here, or over here, you can actually start to get some rot, which is not good. But, you know, for the most part, you just have to pay attention to basically any kind of water spills or whatnot. So maybe you have a towel there, but. And as we move on to the generator, this one does have the Cummins. It's an Onan 4000, so kind of knock that down there a little bit. But anyway, it's very possible that I will be taking this generator out because for the most part, these are expensive to run, they're expensive to replace, and 80% of my camping or more is virtually non-generator. I go where the climate is typically cooler, uh, on the coast, up in the mountains and stuff. So, But I always bring a generator with me that I can at least have in case of emergencies so I can at least run my EC units and more. But because of solar, lithium batteries, power stations, I won't be needing that so much anymore. So it's very possible I'll take that out and I'll put it in for long-term storage is probably what will happen. And so we'll go ahead and take a look inside now. So as we open up here, this brings you into the main part of the trailer, obviously. And so this one has a nice kitchen area and a lot of accent lighting, which is nice. Free of uh, Furion stove and microwave, and not to mention the fridge, which this one here is a Norcold. And uh, so this one is propane and it's electric. So it's not just a 12 volt residential style fridge. And this one comes with a TV and a full, basically it's a Rockford Fosgate system that they did with a powered sub up there and the speakers that come in the ceiling and outside. You still get kind of the cheaper Jensen deck, but at least they gave you some of the other goodies. I got to actually see if they even provided an amp for the outside speakers or if it's just a, you know, basically a, a self-powered sub unit. So kind of curious on that. 
And this would be your entryway into the bedroom here, which you can actually access from the bathroom on this side as well. So as we just kind of take a quick peek, you come into the bedroom up here, which you can fully get around on both sides. It's a little bit snug, but for the most part, you know, this actually gives you a lot of room over here and a decent amount of storage that's over here on where your vanity is. And just you have a little countertop with uh, some DC outlets that are over there in the corner. You have your power systems that are down there and... Over here you have a decent sized storage cabinet where you can basically hang up, you know, a lot of your clothes, jackets and whatnot. So, but overall this isn't a bad layout. It's not too bad for as far as, you know, I mean, this is a queen style bed. It's not gonna be the king that I had in my last trailer, but it still provides enough room and you have a couple cutty, cubbies that are over in the corner and your overhead storage up above and still provides a decent amount of storage, but not nearly as much as that you're gonna find in a travel trailer. Now this one does have the upgraded porcelain toilets, which is kind of nice. And one thing I found that on pretty much all trailers, they don't give you a toilet paper holder. So you have to either find something for the most part, but I'll probably mount something somewhere around this area. But there are a couple additions that they did do. Like they had some towel racks, which is nice. And a couple hooks in a few corners, like kind of like right up in there. And also not to mention when you go with the doors here, they have a little magnet shut. So basically it's just a magnet that holds them closed. Now, instead of it doing a little latch or doorknob, let me pull that open. You come back out over here and up inside these cabinets is where you kind of find uh, your power management stuff. So you'll have all your switches for your slides, water pump, other lights, not to mention generator startup here as well. And then over here is just basically more storage. Um, but for the most part, you know, you have your power control system up there that'll kind of give you a little bit of information as you scroll through to see, you know, uh, water heater power and AC front and back and some other, you know, features and stuff. But for the most part, you know, I don't know, I'd rather kind of see my battery stuff. So I'll be adding you know, some kind of a battery monitor system at some, port, some point. And as we swing around this way, this kind of shows you the slide out couch. Uh, with the overhead lighting now each one of these lights is actually just a self switch so it would have been nice to have those on a switch or you know a different feature anyway but um, you have two recliners the one in the middle doesn't recline but then you can also pop out you know the center cushion to you know give you a couple cup holders armrest and whatnot so you do have a little bit of storage that's over here and these deep cubby storages are, are not too bad they provide a decent amount but you do have deep kitchen storage as well for pots and pans if you want to put them down there and grand design even gave you this little kind of a drawer down here that if you want you can actually put this you know for a dog and or a cat or whatever it is you want to carry around your little furry animal friends but you can, uh, you know, water and, and food right there or utilize this for something else, which I don't think we'll be utilizing this for any kind of pet. So we'll probably change that out. And as we come back to the garage, this is what's cool about this model. As you come back in here and you end up having a full space. If you happen to have kids, they kind of have their own room now with a happy jack sofa units. Basically, these will turn into a bed. Um, and basically go up to the top up there where your other bunk is and you can switch this around into a couple different configurations The whole happy jack system will come fully up Up there where it touches the other bed and you can actually drop the happy jack beds off into the side if you need more clearance And if you even wanted more and you didn't need that extra bunk up there You could pull the pins and remove the whole thing if you really wanted to but it's kind of a nice little feature this this is actually relatively comfortable as well and there's a table that goes there which is stored currently another cool thing about this unit um this garage i believe is right at 10 feet and you have the mounts that are down here so you can kind of mount everything which i may put some tracking system in here as well but we'll see but another cool feature though is this extra bathroom so this bathroom now can kind of be for the kids they don't have to come up and utilize the other one and they did actually mount another vanity inside here with a little towel holder and a couple other little things with a with a little bit of a hook these things aren't actually added when you buy this unit so it's just uh, something else the owners had them install grand designs when they when they purchase a unit so kind of a nice little updates just for you know basic features that you kind of need to hang your towels and, and other features now when you're looking at the entry door here in the bathroom there you do have also some overhead storage which is up here 
Now they did change this just a little bit in the newer models. They got rid of the little brace that's down below. And basically they just put netting up there, which the netting actually allows for more room to get things in and out because that little bar there, if the item is too big, you can only get it, you know, so much into that size of a cubby. So the netting actually kind of makes more sense. I think this looks cleaner, but the netting is probably easier to work with. And as we swing back around, another cool feature are these three season doors. These doors actually can, you know, provide another kind of a spacing or room because as you drop the back deck down, you actually have another area to hang out with, you know, the basic gate that goes all the way around it. And then these doors can stay closed to keep this area free from, you know, maybe heat or weather or whatnot. It provides just an extra living space, basically. And, and this has a full drop curtain that you can put down here if you want as an option and more. So... And so now with the gate open back there, uh, so you can get your toys in and out, this does turn into basically, you know, a big giant patio. So now the three season doors, which you can actually take this glass, slide it up and down to create just vintage, uh, because you do have screens here. So now you can have a cross breeze come in and out. And as we open up this door here, then you basically get kind of a back patio that you can, you know, hang out with your friends on, put your chairs out here. You know, and these are common with toy haulers, but you can have, I believe, I'll have to double check the rating on this door, but I think it was, it's like eight people, 2,000 pounds, I think. So I'll double check that. It's kind of an absurd number, I thought, but anyway, so that's what happens with now the decking and the door. So you kind of get an extra space. So kind of a cool layout. And so this is basically what it looks like with it fully opened up and you know so for the most part uh without the awning open that's uh kind of you're ready to go set up you got both your acs up top and you can see maybe just the edge of the solar panel up there which is 300 watts again and but for the most part that's the new trailer hope you guys like the little tour and uh you know for the most part make sure you stick around for some of the mods and stuff i'll be doing to it later so other than that hope you guys like the video be sure to like and subscribe and until then i hope to see you guys next time